Okay guys, welcome again. My last recording has been completely gone away because of this electricity issue. So I am recording this session again. Uh, now in today's session basically I am going to focus mostly on a function side, uh, basically a user defined function if I would really say. In a user defined function is very very important for every users because they want to create your code in course of my modular way or maybe the object oriented way. So user defined functions are really important for, for every user so I can say. Now how to create a user defined function, how to utilize them, how what is the difference between a global and local uh, variables over here as well as I'm going to, going to cover lambda function. So I'm not going to cover each and everything into this particular video itself. So I spread it around into multiple videos and what you can do is you can have a look in this video is going further. Now to get started with, uh, let's talk about a user defined function. So when I say a user defined function, how I define a user defined function, I say def and the name of a function. So here I use the name of function as function, but you can use anything. Now any number of parameters and I give some statement. Let's say I put this is function definition. Now this is a very small uh, function which contains only one statement to get executed which is print this is function definition. Now this is how we can create a function definition. If I want to call up, I can say function and provide the brackets around and it gives me the result. Now two very important thing about this particular function is first this function is not accepting any parameters. Now where are the parameters we are passing? We are passing the parameters here. So I cannot call this function with the parameters like for example in this case I say function of 10 it means I am passing one parameter which is 10 which is not accepting over here so it gives me an error. It says that my function takes no argument and I have provided one. That's a very important thing. Second thing is this function is not returning anything. So if I say var equals to func func and I call this particular function. Now what this var is going to hold? Now if I just print this up it is going to hold nothing, none. So that's very important that if you try to return something from your function you should return with the help of a keyword called as return and you can capture these values into the variables whenever you require it. Like for example I does the same thing I say now what you do is I say return and I say some value out of it let's say 10 I can simply say. Now I call this function so it gives me two things one is this is a function definition and the return value which I can capture in a variable so I say var equals to function function and that's all. Now my var is going to hold value called as 10. So this is how exactly it works uh, that how to pass a parameter to this function and how to call this up. Now if I want to create a function which is basically expecting let's say one parameter. So how to create this? I give the name of a parameter. I can anything give over here a, b, c and whatever I want. I give name in fact. Now I, I just uh, print here the value of name and I, I, I just cross this up. Now but this function is now expecting only one parameter and we are passing one parameter over here. So how to call this up? Now I say function and I provide a name let's say for example Jatin I get the value. This is one way how I can call it. The second way I can call it is I can provide the name of a parameter something like this. So what it does uh, name is going to hold a value Jatin. So I can pass like this but in, in fact remember the first rule I cannot call this function with multiple parameters because it holds only one parameter. So let's say for example if I give here if I give here Pune. Now this is not gonna work. Reason being is because my function is expecting only one parameter and passing two parameters. So definitely it is not going to work over here. So this is how the basic definition of a function works. And if I want to create a function which holds more parameters, how exactly we can do that? Let's say for example, I create a function now, I, I reduce my function name and I say name, let's say for example city. So this is the way, I say name, okay, and I say city. Now I enter this up. Now this function is accepting two parameters, so I have to call two parameters. Let's say I give something like this. I say Jatin and I say city is. That's one way. The other way I can call it like this as well. I say uh, the first parameter let's say is Jatin and the second parameter I can say city equals to Pune and this I can also do. 
I can also do like this. I say name equals to Jatin. Now that's also correct, completely correct with this. There is no problem with this particular statement. So I have give name Jatin city, and I can reshuffle it if I want. Let's say for example, I want to shuffle it up. I can do that. Here we go. Uh, that's also perfectly fine. So I shuffle this up. So the first name is going to hold a value Jatin here, and the city is going to hold a value Pune. Now. This is how exactly it works over here. Now, if I try to put more parameters to it, how exactly I can start it up. Let's see. I say function, I say func, and if I give like this, I say, uh, okay, I say name equals to Jatin, and I say Pune. Now, according to you, what is going to happen in this case? I put what is going to happen in this case. Now here we are saying we are passing in the first parameter with the help of a name called as name, uh, which is a parameter name, and second parameter with nothing. So in this particular case, it is not going to work actually. Uh, this is a syntax problem in Python when it says that the first parameter is name. So Python is expecting the other parameter should be named as well. So if I want to have it similar kind of stuff, I have to say city equals to Pune, not only Pune. So when I run this, it gives me the error. So that's you always keep into mind that if the first parameter or the second parameter is going to be a named parameter, the followed parameter should not be unnamed. So it says the same thing. It's a non-keyword argument after keyword argument. And this should be avoidable. So such things uh, uh, become important and uh, you have to remember. So I come up with the new concept. Just wait for a moment. Okay. So this is how exactly it works. Now let's proceed further and try to do more stuff using it. Uh, let's say if I want to define a function, okay? So I want to define a function. Now here I am putting the default value. So I am putting the default value is Pune. Now what does it mean? It says when I call the function, I have to pass one parameter which is mandatory. And if I don't provide a second parameter by default, its value is Pune. And second thing is, let's say if I give the value to it, oops, I say func as a name equals to uh, let's say Rahul and I say city equals to Bangalore so it holds a value now Bangalore not Pune because the the value which I passed over here it's actually overwrite the value which is written in a default value so that's also very good in concept so if you want to make something default you can put a default value inside your function definition in this way the third thing is, let's say if I want to make it something like this. Now I have one more parameter, let's call it as age, okay, and I print age here. But when I try to do it, it is going to give me the error. Now why it is going to give me the error over here is because here the first argument is mandatory, the second argument is is an optional, and the third argument I have put as a mandatory, which is again not feasible, and the same rule which we have seen earlier, on keyword argument after keyword argument same thing non default argument non default argument follow default argument so if i have to define anything i have to give some constant value to it let's say for example i give 35 and that that's pretty old but let's see it now i can call that function now this function is going to accept one mandatory parameter one optional parameter and another optional parameter so i say one mandatory two optional parameter over here so make sure that when we are defining it, your non-keyword argument should not follow the keyword argument. So that's pretty important and that you should take care of it. I hope it is, it is clear now. So let's proceed further with more things over here. So two rules is one is you should not have a default keyword argument after default, uh, non-default keyword argument after default keyword argument. And the second one is there should not be non-keyword argument after keyword argument. So this is how we can define a function. Let's proceed with more details about a function. Okay. Also, uh, you have seen uh, that so many times you have uh, a function. Now, which function can accept n number of argument without mentioning it over here? Like for example, I mentioned over here that my function is expecting one mandatory argument and two optional argument. But what happen if I pass four argument? That definitely an error over here. So I want to be a little bit uh, greedy over here 
Now what I want is, let's say my function can accept n number of arguments from a user. So I have to create a function which can accept n number of arguments whether user provides or not provides, both it will consume. So I does the same thing, I define a function and in function definition I pass in parameter like star and whatever, let's say names. Now I print names over here. Now that's the smallest definition of a function over here which accept n number of arguments. Now what this star is? Now star is basically a syntax here. Now what this syntax will do is it accept n number of unnamed arguments from a user in case of names. Like for example if I call it, I say func, let's say I give some values, Jatin, I give Akash, I give Rahul, Okay, now it accepts three arguments. Now if I give, if I remove this up, two argument. If I remove anything, it accept no arguments. So it means I have created a function which accept n number of arguments, something like this. I say uh, def of employ, and I say employ name, which is a mandatory one, age is mandatory one, and let's say managers. Now what this function is saying, it's saying what you can do is you can accept one name from a user, one age from a user and n number of managers from a users. And when I call this employee, I have let's say give Jatin, I give 35 and I give let's say Ovijay, Rohan, oops, I have to remove this up, I say Rohan, I say Amit, Okay, so the multiple managers of Jatin has been gone into managers uh, variable. I run this up, so it gives me the values accordingly. Vijay, Rohan and Amit. So this is exactly how it works. So you cannot provide a named argument as, as per the rule. Let's say if I give over here like this, I say name equals to Jatin. So this is not a valid case and it is going to throw an error and we receive an error over here. So. This is how it, we ex uh, uh, it works and we expect uh, to pass an n number of arguments from a users using star. The second thing I have over here is, let's say if I want to pass a named argument, in, well, here you can see that I have passed all the unnamed argument. Well, let's say for example, I want to pass now the named argument. So I does the same thing over here. Now instead of using this star, I use star star. I use two stars over here basically. Now I call this employ, let's say the first value which is the name I pass Jatin, second value I give 35 and now I have to say manager, let's say for example manager 1, I say no manager 1 is Akash, now I have to pass named, I, I say manager 2, manager 2, it's equals to Vijay, now I say manager 3, oops, manager 3, I have to say this is, let's say Rohan for example. Now, how it exactly works over here is, it accepts these values, so name is going to work into Jatin, age is going to work into 35, and these managers, these managers are basically going to hold these values, so manager 1 is going to hold a value Akash, manager 2 is going to hold a value Vijay, and manager 3 is going to hold a value Rohan in terms of dictionary. So now I can see over here, it's created a dictionary basically, which hold all these values, first become the key, second become the value, this become the key, this become the value, this become the key and this become the value. So this is how it works and I hope it is quite clear to you. So I, I stop over here so I can in uh, next session uh, mostly I'm going to focus on uh, how to just revolve around this uh, user defined functions, how to use a global and local variable and how to use a lambda function. That's pretty important. So for this, stay tuned. I will record in second video. Till then, all the best. See you later. Thank you so much for joining the session.